Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Emma Doherty. I'm, uh, I don't go by Emma. I'm Emmy, Emmy Lou. Um, you can call me Professor Dr. Doherty, but welcome. I am the person, the internship uh, coordinator of record here in the Department of Journalism and Public Relations. I'm the one who enforces the requirements. And actually, I've been doing that since 1990. So welcome. And I'm going to go right to my PowerPoint because I have a lot to cover today. And so I'm going to share this. And this is basically journalism uh, 498, what you need to know now, because you are actually going to um, uh, I have to start doing this soon. Here you go. OK, so can everybody see that journalism 498 uh, internship, what you need to know now? Everybody cool? Just Dan, uh, you're muted. Maybe you can unmute. Yes, I am here. Can you see it? I can. Um, so it's displaying. OK, good. OK, so just so you know, you guys, um, the session will be recorded. Your, micro your microphones will be muted. Um, you can ask questions in the chat, and we'll do that. You can ask them as we go along, but I'm only going to address that in the end. They'll be monitored by Robbie and Abigail, our two JPR internship ambassadors, and I understand Robbie's here now. But also, I've got Dan. He's going to do it for me. He's our technology coordinator, and we've got some other faculty who can also help me. So we're going to talk about finding an internship that meets course requirements, and there's oftentimes a lot of confusion about it. But here's what I want you to know first. You have skills and talent. I don't want you to ever forget that, you guys. For you to be here in my audience, and most of you are graduating seniors, you have taken so many classes. You've taken multimedia classes. You've taken social media classes. You've taken reporting classes and writing, all kinds of writing classes. You've taken, if you're in public relations, strategic planning classes. You've got a distinct set of skills and you can take any of these internships and I know you can. So don't you think that you aren't ready for an internship, you are. Okay, second, you are in one of the world's largest media markets. And there are lots and lots of internships that, are, uh, that qualify for 498 credit. They're abundant, they're all over the place. And I can help you with that. And we're gonna show you what the requirements are. Third, if you're in the spring section of Journalism 498, and there are four sections, we're going to have about 100 of you in the spring, you start now to find an internship. Okay, application deadlines for most spring internships, you guys, either some might have uh, uh, already you know, disappeared, but some are fast approaching. So you want to start looking now because um, – you, you you think the interview um, process, it takes, you know, oh, a couple of days. It doesn't. It can take three weeks or more. So apply to many, many internships. You follow up. Uh, you, if you haven't heard back in a week about an interview, you contact them again. Don't and just and you might be rejected from. 75% of the ones that, or you never hear from them, even after follow-ups, don't let that rejection ever affect you, whether it's looking for an internship or looking for a job. Very, These are both parallel um, activities. Now, you're gonna, I'm going to require that you see the Career Development Center for free help with your res cover letter and resume. You got to make them great. So if you need help with that, you've got experts doing that. And I require all my students to have it done and have that. They'll, they'll keep a, a chart for me as who's visited them. I required all my students this semester, about 75 of them in my three sections to do it, and they did it. So you're going to do it too. And that way you get some professional who's giving you a free service service to give you advice on your cover letter and resume to make them great. Okay, now here are the requirements for Journalism 498. I'm going to preface this by talking about the types of internships. I like all my students, I like all of you to do at least three internships before you graduate. If this is your only internship that you'll ever have before you graduate, no problem. We're, we're setting you up. That's okay. But there are freshman level internships, you guys, and it's basically exposure to the field. Um, 
you're not going to get an internship for 498 credit for that. Okay, sophomore and junior level internships, they'll expose you to the field, you'll do grunt work, but they'll maybe give you an assignment or two to work on your skills. Okay, that's not for you. If you're in 498, you want a senior level internship that is focused on skill development. That's what you want. Okay, you want you want one, you want to find that internship that focus on skill development. I'm going to tell you what skill development is. Okay, what the heck is she talking about? What is skill development? Okay, in our business, in our business of communications, which is what we share, writing is skill development, editing is skill development, shooting pictures, photography, shooting film, layout and editing it. Lay and cropping photos and editing film, editing stories, layout and design or design and layout, designing graphics, laying out pages, laying out website pages, multimedia production. That can include anything from PowerPoint to films to podcasts, doing stuff that that we in our business do. OK, it's got to be what you're and you kind of can't you guys have to show me your work, by the way, after 50 hours, you're going to show me five examples of your work. After 100 hours, you're going to show me 10. And that's work you can display in your portfolio and show a potential employer, whether you have an old, uh, you know, a hard copy of your portfolio or digital. And we hope you have both, actually, if you're in public relations, but digital you, that you can actually show what social media posts that you created, what videos you created, what podcasts you created what what stories you've written okay so specific journalism 498 requirements you have to have 100 hours that you will work throughout the semester and we make it easy for you we're 100 hours is on at the low end it's at the very lowest end as far as i know of all internships for academic credit that's not a lot of hours that means you can work every friday if you wanted to during the day eight to five and still get your 100 hours over 15 weeks okay of the semester but you should be aware uh, that can like can i do more hours of course but one thing you have to be aware of is that your internship may may involve much more than the the hours we require and um and may involve many more hours than we require okay that is kind of normal you might be in an internship where they want you two days a week for eight hours each day. So they want you 16 hours a week. Some will ask you to be there for 20 hours a week. Some will want you three days in the morning. So that all depends. And often they work with around your schedule. So let's continue talking about what is skill development. Now, your work must be related to journalism or public relations. And I've had students say, "Can you know, I'm in public relations. Can I do one in journalism? I want to work at um, the Beachcomber because I've always been interested in working for a local local newspaper, a community newspaper. Absolutely. And if you're in journalism, you might say, you know, I would love to do social media. I've taken the public relations social media classes and the digital class, and I loved it. And I would like to try my hand at public relations. Sure. Uh, we don't have a problem with that. Just, just make sure that you may not know some of the lingo, uh, the jargon used in public relations, or maybe even journalism, but particularly broadcasting. Uh, so you, you'd you have to get up to speed on that. But let's talk about journalism for a minute. So if you really want to pursue a career in journalism, I suggest that you get a, a position in, in an internship in journalism. So that would be in media organizations like television stations, news networks, sports networks, ESPN, we've had students there at Fox Sports so many, many times. Newspapers, magazines, news radio. Um, you know, those are all depending on what your interest is, you know, you focus on that. Now, what are you going to be doing there? You're usually reporting, assisting reporters, doing production, editing. You might be uh, meaning um, you might be at KNBC and you will be um, working with video and maybe editing. You might be actually doing research and going through all kinds of past um, videos and looking at film and, you know, logging films and logging tapes and things like that. You'll be doing a lot of that stuff. So usually you'll be doing as production editing, but you'll be doing writing, you'll be doing editing, you'll be covering stories. If you're in, um, say, KCBS, you might be working on the assignment desk. That's the desk 
that if you're in broadcast or journalism, you probably know what the assignment desk is. That's kind of the hub of the newsroom in broadcast. They, they're the ones, if I find, a, I see a crash, a big crash on Bellflower, that's who I'm calling. And those are the people answering the phone. Those are the journalists screening your calls and doing other things, of course. So think about that. Do you have to do all those things? Like everything here that's listed? No, you might be only doing one thing that's listed. So let's look at public relations or communication internships. Oftentimes, public relations is called communications out there. Um, that's what it is. It's not comm studies. That's a theoretical program. Ours is the hands-on. That's what public relations is. We train professional communicators for businesses and nonprofits. So what is public relations? You could work at companies, profit-making at nonprofit. You could work for public relations agencies like Hill and Knowlton or Wolcott, which is a small one. What are you going to be doing? You're going to be doing the same kind of stuff that you do in your classes, in those skill building classes. So you're going to be writing stories for newsletters. You'll be writing press releases, writing fact sheets, writing biographies, writing backgrounders. You'll be writing blogs, stories for blogs, blog posts. You'll be doing social media, writing uh, posts for social media. You'll be designing collateral materials such as brochures, newsletters, flyers, social media posts, digital materials printed materials. You'll create multimedia, um, you know, PowerPoint. You'll be creating videos. You'll be doing all those for social media and websites, whatever's required. So JPR students can do either a, a journalism or public relations communications, also called marketing communications internship. You can't do just one in marketing. It's got to be marketing communications, those materials that support marketing that are promoting something. So just think about that, you know. Um, all the different things you can do. It's so exciting, such fun. And by the way, you don't wanna be wasting your time. So I just want you to know that you're ready to do these things and you wanna do them now because to, get, to be marketable, when you graduate, they're gonna ask for experience and you're gonna to have to show the work that you've done. You can't just list a bunch of classes that you've taken. You've gotta show the work that you've done. And of course, if you're uh, doing work for the Daily 49er or 22 West or the Student Media Dig or Dig in Espanol, all that's great too, but they'll wanna see other things as well. So all that's just terrific. Same with you doing PRSSA leadership and doing flyers and posters and, you know, news releases for that organization. That's all good too. But the other big one, last important thing about 498 is your site supervisor. Now that person, your site supervisor is your mentor and teacher. Yes, you meet with me every week. Yes, I go over things like salary negotiation, networking, uh, resume writing. I do all that as well because I'm trying to prepare you to launch your career. Okay, but this person is going to be somebody very special in the mix of things. This person must be a seasoned professional and Students will ask me, what do you mean by season? I mean, lots of years of professional experience in the field. And we don't count internships that they've had as professional experience in the field. We want somebody seasoned who's who knows what they're doing, who can guide you, who can mentor you, who you can have coffee with and ask. Usually you have to ask to have coffee with that person. And I'll talk to you about in the class about taking the initiative and all those good things to build rapport with that person. But anyway, must be seasoned, somebody who can make contacts for you and help you network and be a, be a recommendation for you on, um, on your reference list. And so hopefully not only will this be a seasoned professional, but we'd like this person to have five years of managerial experience on top of being a seasoned professional. So I want somebody who's hopefully knows the network out there, knows how to connect you, how to mentor you, how to guide you, how, how to give you advice, seasoned advice. And it cannot be somebody who just graduated a few years ago with a BA or BS, meaning a bachelor's of arts or a bachelor's of science. And you're going to be able to judge that yourself uh, by just seeing their background because almost everybody's on LinkedIn. And, and here's the deal, though, something you want to know, and that is you will work with a team of people. You might even be interviewed first by that person and then the, your site supervisor later if they like you. That person might screen you. You might be working with somebody just out of the field. That's good, too, because it's likely you're going to be working with a 
team of people. And in that case, but your site supervisor still has to be above everybody, has to be somebody who's seasoned. So um, you may be working with other people who might even interview you, but your site supervisor has to be somebody who can really mentor you and be your faculty member offsite. You must provide a background on your site supervisor, which is pretty, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go that fast, which is pretty easy to find on LinkedIn. And I'll, I'll, I'll address that too. Your internship must be screened for journalism 498 uh, approval. So uh, how do I screen your internships to ensure you have the potential of earning three units of academic credit for 498? Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do this. First of all, I will tell you, and I think I put it on a screen coming up, but I am the enforcer. <laughs> Do you ever watch those Enforcer movies? I just love them. I wanted to. I just love those. There's a three coming out, by the way. Okay. That's a, but I'm the Enforcer. So just so you know, the requirements for this class, I don't make them up. They were first done by the Curriculum Committee, which is in the Journalism and, and Public Relations Department. So that Curriculum Committee comes up with how this course will be taught. And then it moves on to generally in, in our in our department, changes in such as anything to the curriculum that are major would go to the department faculty for approval as well. So the our faculty have talked about this class plenty of times, let me tell you, as a faculty. Then it goes on to the EPCC, actually the College Curriculum Committee for approval. And since we just had uh, uh, got a bachelor's in public relations formalized, not only did it go to the college, it went to academic affairs and then on to the chancellor's office. So you can't come to me and say, oh, you know, I want to do this internship in information systems since, you know, Denise and I just talked, or I want to do it at, you know, some other place, you know, at the, you know, in a rec department, you know, overseeing little kids playing games. I don't know. I can't help you with that. Um, I can only enforce this this class as it's been required to be taught. So I just want you to know that. And how do I enforce it? You will complete an application found on the JPR internship site. By the way, I'll show you that site pretty soon. Let me see how I'm doing on time. Good. I'm doing good. I will show you where that is and we'll show you. And also, once I open up the class, it'll be there as well. And it's an application not for the internship you're looking for, but for me to screen the site. And I'm actually working with some students in, in the classes now who've already sent me um, their um, application. I'm looking at it. It'll include vital information about the site, like the type of the organization, its location, et cetera. It, you'll also tell me your skill development task that you'll be doing. So when you look at an internship, you guys, you want to make sure that you'll be writing and editing and designing or any of those things that I covered, skill building tasks that you'll be doing. And I want about three quarters of what you do to be skill building. A quarter of your task can be just honestly, you know, double checking, uh, uh, dates on a calendar listing, or it can be just making copies or, you know, updating media lists. That's fine. It's all clerical stuff. Um, so they've got to be skill building. And when you're interviewed, you want to ask lots of questions. You don't want to waste your time, trust me. You don't want to waste your time because once you commit to a site, you're going to be stuck there. So make sure you know. You, you can be picky, so be picky. Uh, background on your site supervisor. That includes past employment, their educational degrees. They're usually found on LinkedIn. Sometimes they're actually on the website. You want to actually tell me facts and not a bunch of hype that you read somewhere. So you guys know the difference between hype and factual information. I want facts when you uh, do that. I give that information. So how do I find an internship? I'm going to actually show you the ones we have open now in a minute or two. Well, probably in about five minutes. So how do I find an internship? Okay. First, you want to look at, honestly, you guys, what do you want to do when you graduate? You, you, you guys are all skilled at finding information. You guys can probably find information very quickly, whether you're in public relations and journalism. Why? Because we've taught you how to do that. You just apply the skills that you've learned in your classes on how to find information. So where do you want to go? See if they have an internship. 
you know, say, oh, my God, I've always wanted to work with Disneyland. See if they have an internship and apply. And also, don't be afraid to ask your faculty members. Like, I have a few contacts at Disney. Um, a couple of our grads are there. In fact, they were speakers last year on internship. One was internship week. Um, you know, they think about where you want to go. Like, we have one of our grads is in charge of VP of communications at the, the Kings, you know, uh, which is a hockey, you know, uh, organization. So we've got a lot of this. We've got contacts, you know, think about where you want to go, see if they have internship, use your faculty, see if we have contacts there. So we're going to show you the JPR site. All those listings are ready to go for you. Also, the Career Development Center has, I think it's called Beach Link. You can go there. College of Liberal Arts also posts some. And once my course is open, I have all the critiques every year. All students in the class, including you coming up, will write a one-page critique on your site. And you, at the top is all the information about that site. You'll have access to those. And we have a, a, a database. It's an Excel listing that has truly hundreds of sites our students have been at before. And that uh, will be available to you as well. But the first thing to do is the JPR site. Because if you tell me that first week of class, I've been trying. I haven't found anything. I'm going to ask you where you have applied. And I'm going to ask you where you applied, who you to, who did you talk with, um, who did you apply to, where did you find it, what dates did you do it. I'm going to ask specific. So make sure you, you, you keep that in mind. Now, what about, okay, pandemic and after? We're supposedly post-pandemic, but we don't know. But internships can be in person. They used to be required to be in person, not anymore. They can be remote or they can be hybrid. I think about how my students are doing hybrids, meaning they're in person some days and the remote other days. This is the link that I'm going to take you to in a few minutes. This is my email. So you can email me, you know, and I have office hours on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays and they're online. You can go to our website and find my office hours. But I have office hours on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And uh, they're around my classes, and I'll be glad to talk to you. You can come in and talk to me. You can Zoom. You can call me on the phone, okay? And I can talk to you about anything. So this is a real course that I want you to know, okay? If you aren't serious about this course, you guys, do not take it. If you're not ready to take it, do not take it. You are taking a space from someone else, and you'll probably have to drop out and you won't make us look good and, and you'll start something you can't finish. So this criterion 498, I mentioned this already, is established by the department and approved and approved by the university. You represent not only yourself, but also our department and CSULB, okay? And I'm the one, you can argue until you're blue in the face to me about the requirements of the class, but I'm gonna be the enforcer. I'm gonna be the one. In fact, some of the faculty call me the warden. You know, I feel like the warden. I'm like, look, um, you know, anything can be changed on the curriculum committee, but right now this is what it is. So you must, um, realize this is a real course and you have to get a specific type of internship that we must approve. So you must complete and submit numerous assignments on, um, on, on our Beach Board page once it's open by the assigned deadlines during the spring semester. You must attend our weekly Zoom classes and we will have them weekly. So when you sign up for a section, you're going to see when our weekly classes are and I will expect you to be there and I do take attendance and I will notice when you're not there. Okay, and everything, by the way, all assignments are done through Beach Board. You can't email me assignments, by the way, just so you know. But we'll go over that once the first day of the semester. <laughs> you must read materials and study learning modules posted in the context section of 498. So I'll have I'll have some on networking. I do give a quiz on, um, we have networking, we have um, how to do resumes, how to do your LinkedIn page, all that good stuff as well. So it's, a, it's an actual course. Some students don't realize that. They they think, oh, I get an internship and then I don't have to worry about it. And then you're not really in the class. Uh, again, do not take 498 if you cannot devote time, energy, or attention to it. Just save it for another semester. You won't be doing yourself any favors. It does take energy and time. Okay. So basically, let me go back to some of the slides. That is, I think that's the end of my show here. Hold on, but I want to go back. Okay, I want to go right here. You guys have to tell me if I might have to re 
Okay. Okay. I'm going to skip verification. Okay. It did. It skipped it for me. Um, Dan, can you tell if this is loading? Is it, am I on the JPR website? Or? It doesn't look like it. Um, okay. You, you have to probably, since you're sharing um, this from a, um, a slideshow, you probably will need to change the screen that you're sharing. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, you should see it now. Can you see it now? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so you guys, it's funny because this is this is the JPR, um, our website. And, and to get to it, <laughs> because I'm lazy probably and don't commit this to memory, or uh, I just put in there CSULB JPR internships. That's how I get to it each and every time when I show students. Or I'll just sit, put CSULB journalism internships and I'll get right to this page. And um, let me go down here. I got to move you guys, all your, all your wonderful faces here. And um, it just talks about our internships. But when you come down here, here's JPR Day. And I, oh, you can also listen to past, um, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. Um, you can also, uh, Dan, do you have the past um, internship weeks? I do. Just go ahead and click on that link okay. right there. And I just want to scroll show to the bottom. Okay. Um, I don't know if you clicked on the link. I can't. Oh, tell. oh here I there am. You go. Yeah, right down to the bottom. Okay, here you go. I'm sorry. This is like funky. Okay. So this is, by the way, I hope you can all be there for tomorrow's session at 11. And it's landing that first job, getting promoted and negotiating the best salary. And these are all of our grads, you guys. Um, Leslie Torres Bryant. Oh, my God, you guys. She started at her internship. Um, um, right. She was hired uh, from her internship and it has been a stellar career for her. I mean, unbelievable. She specializes in healthcare. That's she, um, it's a real interesting story, by the way, I might tell you in the future, but yeah, she, and these were all my, I was all their professor. I've been here forever. And this is Betty, who's fantastic. And she was a little fireball in my 311 class. And she also took two internships. And she's now at the Washington Post. And then uh, Heather, I don't know if you guys remember, Heather was, um, she was on, not America's Got Talent. What's that singing show? That first one that came out. Anyway, she let, she's a wonderful singer. And she just took her career and she decided to parallel it right with uh, music. And so she handles public relations at Fender. And uh, it's not America's, because America, what is that song that, I mean, that show, American Idol. She was on American Idol. I don't know if you remember, but anyway, she got her MBA here too. So she got her, and she was a journalism student as well as public relations. She did a whole section as an undergrad for the Orange County Register on jazz. She's amazing. Wonderful person. And then um, tomorrow at 1230, you guys, oh no, I'm graduating. Now what? These are all recent grads. And this is Christian. And you guys, he he's a Spectrum Networks. He's in broadcasting. And you can see if you start in broadcasting, you have to start like in Timbuktu. I think he started in Yuma, Arizona. And he just worked his way up. And this is Christina. She was my JPR internship ambassador last year. And she's at the news assistant. So actually, she's at the Press Telegram mostly, writes for the Press Telegram. And this is Alejandro, and he's now art director at the LA Times. He's just in there, just recent grads. It's really cool. I hope you can be there for this session. But anyway, let me keep going. And then if you want to get your resumes done and taken care of, instead of going there by yourself or remotely or um, over the break, you can get them done and just sign up. Um, where's the, oh, sign up. Where's the sign up? Is there a sign up link on, on here? Uh, Dan, I guess we, oh, maybe it's through here. There is. Know. You have to click on where it says here. Um, oh, yeah, I see it. I'm sorry. These old eyes, mine. Got it. And they will they will look at your resume and cover letter, and you can get that done and get it done. Private 20-minute session, and uh, that's awesome. And that will be remote as well. So it says CR Spring Internships here. 
And here's more about the past internship weeks. And I hope you look at them. The speakers have been great for both of these years and they're great for this year too. So let me show you though, keep going. And Dan has the link down there, but I'm just gonna go here again, back at the top. Here are the spring internships that we have. You guys have to tell me if this is gonna take us there. It should take us there. For some reason, my computer's just a little slow today. Is anybody else's that way? Oh, I'm a little slow. I'm bringing it up. Okay. I think that yeah. our um, campus network might be a little bit slow because everybody's watching soccer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I, I love that. Okay. Um, these are spring tw uh, 23. Oh, my God. It's almost 2023. Okay. Okay. Here's some winter. I'm just going to go down to the spring because this is all I care about with you guys right now. Memorial Care. You guys, this is a fantastic internship. It's unbelievable. They give you your own office. You get business cards. It's incredible. It's a wonderful, wonderful. If you want to launch an uh, internship, uh, in healthcare, wonderful way to do it. And by the way, almost all hospitals and healthcare organizations offer internships in public relations or communications. And so do all the museums as well. We'll get more too. I've got the JPR internship ambassadors. Robbie's here today, Abigail, and they're looking everywhere to find these. And this is Domingo Rancho, uh, Adobe Museum. It's the one up the hill here, Bixby, also has internships. They're great. So so this is also an entertainment internship, Sony Pictures, photography internship, Insomniac. One of our students launched her career in Insomniac. Um, Fender, a Fender, of course, Heather, who's coming. They have their internships. So you can look at all of these, the LA Sparks, Orange County Sanitation District, Fox Sports, and you just click on these and you can see what they're looking for. Forbes Wealth Internship, KPCC, Orange County Sheriff's Department. Government internships are really good. Make a wish. Orange View, uh, Ocean View District. I know they've been kind of asking us for some. I don't want to click on them yet. I just want to go through this. Ron Seal Beach, LA Times, MCPR, KBC TV, oops, uh, CBS News, USC Talent Relations Event Intern. I'm not sure if to look at that one, but that might not sure which one that is. Fox Entertainment, Internship, Sony Pictures, HBO Max. And by the way, some of these have different departments. It could be a bunch in Fox, um, HBO a lot, Forbes Editorial Internship, Hollywood Reporter, Sing and Strum has wonderful ones. Um, I think, and I'm going to show you these in a minute. I thought we took off some of these, but I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, Mesa Water District, um, Wall Street Journal, Sling and Stone, uh, the Big West Conference. They're just dying for sports interns. Digan Espanol has one. And some of the, we have some internally as well. So you can do some, if you want to do ones on campus, we've got uh, athletics with Lindy. You can uh, write sports recaps. You can write, you can actually do a whole press kit on a sports team like our polo, water polo team. There's some really good internships on campus. Um, 22 West has about a half dozen. 22 West offers a ton of internships, but only about a half dozen of, of them under Danny Lemos actually are for 498 credit. And I can lead you to those as well. Um, Dig in Espanol has a few. Dig might have some. Um, Daily 49er, uh, uh, Professor Newton, uh, JPR Week, or JP, JPR Social Media Team. So there's quite a few, but they hire pretty early, by the way. Um, Ocean View, I don't know if I just saw that. Uh, Long Beach Airport has them. Also, LAX has uh, wonderful internships. This is, a, this is actually Development Go Beach Go Vote. It's one on campus through our university development program, Modern Currency PR, Daily 49er, um, Student Media, Promotions and Public Relations, The Wolkoff, this is really good. Some of these are paid by the way. He pays like $20 an hour, I believe. 
online publication website. I don't remember which one that is, but you click on the Borgen Project, JV Agency, Worldwide Waves, Well Suited, LA Style, Camp Nova, um, um, Center for International Transportation. They've wanted somebody every time. And we just, they pay like 20 bucks an hour. And, we, and that's an, like on campus. It's paid writing and social media internship, paid writer and resor researcher. But students have never taken them, never applied for them. And if you want to get into the ports or transportation, it pays well if after college. Uh, Kalo Creative is very popular with our students. He has a bunch of them. Um, uh, Sal, by the way, I know a lot of these site supervisors too. So this is Sal Flores, and he has one in communications design, multimedia, public relations, writing, and social media. And you can find the links here. Stand Up for Kids is also a wonderful nonprofit. You'll work with a team of people, but Justine Palmar will be your um, uh, site supervisor, she's executive director, and they have a bunch of them. Social media, they actually have many. Um, Public Relations Institute, Long Beach Forward, um, Beach Candy Swimwear, Coded. There's just so many. Ron Seal Beach, we've had somebody at Ron Seal Beach every semester. Um, this is a, they have a, a 10K and a marathon, something like that. Um, Long Beach Local News, we have a lot of students there. You do multimedia and general reporting. Uh, LA style. We also have Orange Coast Magazine. We usually have, I don't know if it's up here or not, but every semester we have students there as well. Um, oh, Beachcomber, we have students there every semester. This is a really nice one. It's with uh, Jay Beeler. He's been a publisher for years. He's a great guy. Pure game. There's just so many guys. They're just con and you don't just do one. Here's Orange Coast. You should be doing like a zillion of them. I'm not kidding. I mean, do 50, apply for 50, you know? So then there's private listings on Beach Board. These are the same listings, right, uh, Dan? These are pretty much the ones. Yeah, that that's Minerva. a replication of them. Um, we kind of keep some on our public site. We also like to keep them behind the Beach Board firewalls in case that's where you prefer to be. Okay, good. Let me see if I got um, stand up for kids. I could go back and just show you. Let's see what she's doing here. Um, I think this is a blogger. This is a nonprofit supporting children. And you can see it was launched in 2003. Um, this reports to the marketing, marketing coordinator you work with, but your internship site supervisor will be the executive director of Stand Up For Kids. Justine, she's fantastic. And you can see you're gonna be writing, editing, and posting blob and website content. That's music to my ears. Anything that I can see, writing, editing, posting, shooting videos, shooting photos, you know, that's that's exciting to me. Now, don't put down the marketing coordinator. It's got to be Justine, you know, and she will fill out your 50-hour evaluation. She'll do your 100-hour evaluation. Just talks about things. I think this group, though, does, ex uh, you have to go through a check for, of some kind just because you're working with children. They have you do a processing fee of $18, but, um, you know, to do that if you wanted to work with them because, they do background checks because you're working with children. But you can see how these are. They're listed. You can see what they're offering and all this good stuff. Now, okay, so when the class comes about, you're going to be, um, and I know you have these here, Dan. Um, maybe it's at the bottom. Hey, Dan, where's the applications? I know you had them up here. Is it under about? uh applications for which uh you know you have the contracts and all oh here they are it's on the it's on the oh, first page the about go. page there you go um so for me you guys if you want if you have a site that you're ready to go you you will fill out this um this document right here can you guys see that but then right here you don't have to worry about the contract because i'm going to give you the contract you, i i'm actually the writer of the contract i have you fill out the top but i write the skills based on the application that you give me and then this is just so you can see if your if your site wants to see what you that you fill out what they have to fill out this is a 50 hour they evaluate you and a hundred hour and i'll go over these the first day of class but let me see how i'm doing on time you guys Okay, okay, I'm doing good. I'm actually doing great. Um, did it come up, by the way, the application, you guys? Can you see it, Dan? Yeah, it looks it good. Okay, so the application is there. Okay, so you're going to fill this out, you guys, on, and um, it's going to be just your name, your email, your phone number, and you have to 
you have to actually fill this out. And by the way, if the lines, I want everything presented professionally to me. So when you type on these lines, they're going to just move. Just get rid of the line and just type it. I just go through this with every student. Just get rid of the line and type the name of the organization. Type the description. Type the address. I want the phone number, the organization, site super, all this. And don't give me the wrong information because I'm going to call them. And I'm like, one, one guy, I, he's working at the VA um, for the Veterans Administration. It's all settled, but he gave me a, a number for the Veterans Administration where I had to put in my veterans number. I'm like, what is this? No, don't do that stuff to me. <laughs> for me, you know, give me the real information. He said, I'm sorry. I, yeah, but I'm taking my time. And by the way, I respect your time. And please respect mine as well, because I don't want to ever waste your time with class time, with any of this. There's a lot of paperwork in this class. But remember, too, I'm the enforcer of the curriculum, but we're also accredited by the accrediting council in journalism and mass communication. So we want to make sure that we keep our accreditation. So we have standards, high high level standards. It's just the way it is. Here's the description of the internship. You're going to tell me about it. You're going to tell me all about the skills that you're going to, uh, you know, that, that you're going to be doing. And I give you lots of examples so you know what to put in there. How will you be compensated on your time? If they say they're going to give you course credit, that you, that, that make sure you know what that means. Some when they, Sometimes when they say we offer course credit, what they mean is that they'll work with me, somebody like me, to ensure that the work you're doing will earn you three units of academic credit. If they say that's not what they mean, then they're paying, they're saying they're giving you a stipend for your course tuition. So just make sure you know what they mean. Some students will tell me, oh, they're offering me credit. Well, what's that mean? Does that mean that you're, they're requiring that you get credit. Some, some uh, to, to be honest with you guys, and I'll talk about this the first day of class, to get around labor laws, they have to say, you know, the, 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 the Department of Labor basically says, you guys, that you have to, um, that, that workers need to be paid unless they're getting course credit where, where the organization is apprenticing them, like an apprentice. And then that's where you actually learn your trade or your skills, whatever your, your, the field that you're engaged in. So they're, if they're not paying you and they're requiring course credit, that's because you know they don't want to pay you probably and um, they're getting around labor laws. It's kind of like that. But, but in a way that says that they 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 have agreed to have you do skill development. And that's where I come in and talk to them, especially if I don't know them, if they're new, just so they realize that this is a course for three units and it's a high level senior level class. And so, so sometimes how you'll be compensated might be a stipend, it might be an hourly wage, and I want you to put down what the hourly wage is because we keep track of that um, here in the department. Um, I like to anyway. You know, is it 15? Is it 20? Is it eight? What is it? Maybe it's a stipend of $1,000. Maybe it's, but how will you be compensated? What you will get, you guys, is material for your portfolio that will make you marketable so that you are competitive in the job market. It isn't just your degree that's going to get you a, a job. It's going to be your experience. How do you get experience? This is how. Okay, what will your scheduled hours be? And whether, whether you're remote, I still want you to tell me when you plan to devote your time to this internship. So I, I need to know that. If you say it's going to be flexible, I'm going to send it right back to you. I give you an example, like Mondays through Wednesdays, you know. One to five, you know. Okay, is it remote? Oh, I need to add it. The, oh, gee, I'll just give it to Dan. I just included hybrid now, Dan. I'll give you a new one, but it doesn't matter. Some students will just do both. They'll click remote and in person because of this hybrid. And this is again what your, um, you know, what your site supervisor is. And you have to give me, and just don't give me a link. Please write me a little bio or you can bullet point it. I don't care, but some of the links don't work and it's a pain in the butt to try and get to the link if it doesn't work and it doesn't send me to um, somebody's LinkedIn page. So, and sometimes they don't have everything on their LinkedIn page and sometimes they're due. They do. By the way, I will show you LinkedIn pages when we first um, when I meet with you, because sometimes the information is there, but it's hidden and you have to click on a little like plus sign to get to it. If you've worked with LinkedIn a lot, you know this already. But anyway, 
Okay, so actually, I'm done, I think. Can I take questions? Let me see. Ooh, I'd like to moderate those if that's okay. Yeah, I love okay, that. Okay, I'm going to open up my video. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Uh, so we have a, a few questions that have come in, and the first one was answered by um, Roberta, which is cool, and that is when are applications due? Um, and uh, Amy, if you want to go ahead and answer that. Um, okay, great. Everybody. Okay, hi, Sierra. Um, and Sierra Fisher asked that. Nice to meet you, Sierra. And I like to meet you guys, too, um, when, uh, when we meet in class, too, by the way. And well, I hope to get to know you guys all better. But here's the deal. You know, the, I'm going to answer it two ways because she might mean this two ways. One is that application that I showed you is just for me. And that's for me to screen your site. Okay, that's not an app applying for the job. That's, hey, I this is an internship. I want to do this. You know, they've offered it to me. And will it work? And so, and by the way, you, you can be selective. You don't have to jump on the first thing because sometimes you jump on the first thing and you're offered something better, you know, um, that you can give them a couple days, you know, because you don't want to then go through orientation and then quit. That's a bummer. But that one I just showed you, if you have something lined up, send it to me now. Send it to me. I know it's going to be kind of hectic, um, uh, you know, through finals, frankly, because I've got a whole bunch of material to, to look through and grade for my three sections of 498. So I might be really, um, beaten up a little by that but but you can send it to me if you've got some i know a bunch of you won't be sending it to me it's probably going to be one or two or three of you you can send it to me now if you know what you're going to do and i'll try and get to it you can if i don't get back to you follow up with me sometimes i don't see your email and you can definitely and you can actually email your application to me until this, the course is open. And then once the course is open for the spring semester, everything goes through Beachboard. But the application for now, if you want me to screen something now, you know, talk to your site supervisor. If I haven't met that person and do all that, I can do that. I can do that in, in, in during winter too. And, um, you know, so hopefully you can be assured that it's going to meet the requirement. But when is that application due? Technically, Sierra, the one I just showed you, isn't due until the beginning of the semester. It's due the, the second week of the semester because I can't require you to submit stuff to me um, before the beginning of the semester. So, but if you want to screen it, me to screen it and be assured that it's going to earn you credit in the class and you don't want to worry about it, send it to me now. Um, now, um, to answer the second part of that question, wh wh when are the applications due by the, on that list we showed you that Dan set up, Dan did all that work to set all those up for you. Like we just looked at uh, Stand Up for Kids. You want to look at, you know, just click on those links and look and see what their application deadline is. Sometimes there's not a deadline. Other times there'll be a deadline. Some of those deadlines are coming right up. Like I, you know, like I love the, the Performing Arts Center, the Orange County Performing Arts Center. Oh, we always have interns there as well. And, and by the way, um, Dan, remind me, I've got to have you take down a couple of those don't really reply, um, apply for academic credit. There are the, the one in development does, the one in public relations does, and the one in social media. But I don't want, I know we put everything up there, you guys, so that if freshmen want to take an internship, they can. But like event planning, you're just going to do grunt work. It won't earn you 498 credit. And there's another one up there in talent in kind of, uh, you will do set design that doesn't even apply to us. So it doesn't mean that everything listed on there is for journalism 498 credit that we list them because we want our freshmen and our sophomores and juniors to do internships too. But a lot of them do, frankly. And that's a interesting because um, the next question uh, kind mm -hmm. of dovetails right into that. And that is, uh, this one came from uh, Barb, Barb Kingsley. And that is, do you need to be upper division standing student to take 498? And then the second part of that is do the internships listed on the JPR site qualify for senior standing? Um, that came from uh, Marita. Okay, okay. Okay, the first one is, yes, you have to be senior standing. Well, you, right now you have to be senior standing. 
I could get into um, the curriculum committee. I know that they're they're talking about making it upper upper level. Um, if if you are junior or a senior and you've taken most of your skills classes, um, you could talk to me or one of the advisors to see if we can let you in if there's openings uh, into the class. But right now it's senior level standing. You have to have most of your, that's why the second question I think, or one of the major questions on my the application you give to me is the courses that you've taken because you're representing our university right now. You're representing our department and we want you to be ready to do the work, especially skill development or you, so that you earn credit from me and I'm not you know I'm going to want you to earn that credit too I'm going to be I'm going to have your back <laughs> in any difficult situation or challenge uh, at the internship I'm I'm the person going to have your back so um yeah okay but um okay about the the ones that are listed uh, frankly most of the ones that are listed on that site do qualify for 498 and you can tell by if there's writing if there's skill development does that make sense um, Dan, to everybody, if that if it's skill development, I mean, you're writing, you're producing materials, that's going to be skill development, you know. But those ones for um, the the performing arts center, the one set design is not skill development, and event planning is not skill development unless you're doing the invitations, unless you're doing the press release for the event, unless you're doing the website for the event. In that case. You know, if they're having you do that, that can work. And sometimes you guys, I can also work with a site supervisor. Like you'll come to, I had, a, I'll give you an example. I have a student in my cl class this semester, her name's Kelsey. She came to me during the, um, the semester previously. So in last spring, she came to me for the fall class. And she says, I want to get into the wine industry. And she wanted to, you know, work like say Napa. She wants to work at a winery. She wants to get into public relations there. And so we we discussed it. We looked at a variety of things. She came to me with some things I had. We sat in my office and we just went through websites and we looked at, you know, wineries and we looked at different things. And she certainly she she landed one with the wine membership club and she does a lot of beautiful creative materials for them now, which is actually for the. Uh, Santa Barbara above the San, you know, north of Santa Barbara, that region there. And uh, I think she's loving life and she found it. That's the, what she wanted to break into. So, so the next question um, actually um, follows that up really nicely. And this one um, came from Zenny and Joshua. And that is, can we have internships that are outside the area if they're remote or even not remote? So Yes, absolutely. Um, as I said, she does it. She's here, but she does her internship there and it's remote. So you can do a remote internship. You can do a hybrid internship, meaning part of your time is there. Part of your time is remote or you can do an in-person. You know, students vary in what they like and businesses as well. Some some students feel, you know, they can learn a lot better if they're in person. So they prefer in person and they get to get the personal touch. They get to know somebody and they get to make connections. Otherwise, you, you know, um, if you do it hybrid or especially remote, you have to be a skilled communicator. And I will address this as a, during a lecture as well. And I did this past semester because I got to say that when I got my 50 hour evaluations back from the interns this semester, one of the top things that came out was that our students needed to learn how to communicate and update their site supervisors. And so if you're doing a remote, you have to be really on top of it and make sure you understand, get direction, that you're talking on the phone, that you're emailing, you're doing a lot of stuff like that. And sometimes you've got to really perfect those level of skills. If you're doing a remote, but yes, you can do a hybrid, meaning of but remote and in person, solely in person or solely in remote. Okay, did I cool. answer that, Dan? Yeah, I think you did great. Um, okay, and I think that the answer is is really clear, and that's really good news because yeah, that opens up lots of opportunities. So there's okay. another question here, and this comes from Clarissa, and this one says, "What site would you look for to find Los Angeles based or other?" regional type of internships. Um, and that is, you know, notwithstanding the list that we create and put out there, because 
that has them from all over. But what other sites can students go to to find regional based internships? You mean, um, so say if they're they're doing, say if they well, live in I San think, Francisco? I think the question is, is that they may want to work in a very specific narrow area, like a region, like a specific spot. Like, uh -huh. are there other resources than what we provide um, where students can go to find internships? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, and by the way, this this PowerPoint will be available. We'll write down. We're going to put it on the on the site too. Mm -hmm. So yes, not only the JPR but also the Career Development Center has something called BeachLink, and you can look at that. Also, the our College of Liberal Arts also has listings. So I mean, some students have used Indeed. Uh, some students have used all kinds of, you know, um, search engines. They'll Google, you know, internships in communications internships or journalism internships in Santa Barbara, you know, I mean, it's just basic, just research skills, you know, the, that you do. What I, I would suggest that you do is think about where you want to do your internship. And we've taught you how to get information very quickly um, in your classes. So how to get sources of journalism and how to answer questions of business information if you're in public relations. So use those skills, do, do searches, go to their websites. By the way, think about if you want to like, like when he, when Dan gave me your question, you guys, I, I thought of like La, Mar La Mirada is a little town, right? And it has a great internship at the public information office. And so almost if you're in journalism or public relations, public information offices for you know, police departments, sheriff's offices, cities are great places to work. They're government jobs. They have excellent benefits and they have decent, stable pay. And it's hard to get fired from them once you get kind of a tenure. So like the honey, uh, city of Huntington Beach has public information officers. It's called PIOs and they're just government jobs. So think about it that way. Think about all the government jobs that you could get in a region. It's just made me think about that. So, all right, Good. here's a great question that came in from Cameron. Um, first of all, it, it's kind of another two parter. Um, do you advise the students to avoid doing freelance jobs? A and I'll let you take that one. Go ahead and, and then I'll ask the second part. You mean for 498 credit? Um, well, answer it. I think that's what we're talking about here. So, I think in the context of J498, sure. Yeah, yeah, Cameron, if, if, um, if I get if that's, if, oh, wait a minute, maybe, oh, maybe Cameron, okay, let me see, yes, no, and yes. <laughs> Do you advise us to avoid doing a uh, freelance, for example, is applying for radio internships not recommended since I only have writing experience? Oh, uh, oh, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure I understand, but let me approach it from a few different ways. Um, first of all, I had a, I often have a freelance reporters for um, the daily pilot say, they'll actually be independent contractors. They'll be paid for their work, but they're covering high school football games or high school basketball games. And they're doing it for small regional papers and they get, they get paid, but they're they're independent contractors, but they'll work just for the Daily Pilot or the Daily Breeze. So yes, that will qualify. I also say, kind of takes me down another uh, avenue. If you have a job in public relations or journalism right now, um, I mean, maybe we can convert it for journalism for an IDA credit. Or I've actually had one student, she worked at Neiman Marcus and she was a sales rep and she started working for their public relations department. and. Um, created quite a great uh, internship for us for a few years that was actually paid. I'm not sure if it exists anymore because that Neiman Marcus has gone to, uh, through some bankruptcy and that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, um, I would also, by the way, unless you're going to case KPCC or uh, you want to stay away from radio stations in general that aren't all news or PBS, um, you want to you want to you wanna stay with things that are real journalism or broadcasting rather than just playing music because radio uh, 
internships and promotion and aren't very good ones actually haven't worked out for us so be careful of that like kpcc yes reporting working on a show absolutely that's different than you know interesting um, i'd like to yeah. take a shot too at um one of cameron's questions and i think it applies not just um to her specific example and her specific example is applying for radio internships not recommended since I only have writing experience. And just to take that one on its face value, I think that the answer is absolutely get out of your comfort zone and build up your resume and build up your skill set because uh, that makes you all the more marketable uh, in the real world. And um, Emmy, I mean, you could take another example, like let's just say somebody is a, a public relations uh, expert and intern, uh, and that's their major, but what would be the problem with them taking a, a news writing class? Absolutely nothing. Right. Or absolutely. You, you know, um, and you, you should get out of your comfort zone, but, but, but I will caution you that um, you might have to get up to speed pretty quickly. Um, I have a student doing a, a, te a television. Um, she's working on a show that's news, a news show. And it's, it's been, I think, challenging to get, get, get uh, keep up because she's never done it before. She hasn't even taken the broadcasting class. I think if you've taken those classes, you're gonna be in a much better place. Does that make sense? Um, so know that, see if, see, you know, whatever you do, make sure that you present yourself well in the, the interview, that what you have and haven't taken. And I think it has been challenging for her because she has not had any broadcasting classes but yet doing and they expect her to kind of know the technology and so you, you have to understand you just have to learn really fast same with public relations they'll say okay do a backgrounder in x y and z and you don't know what a backgrounder is but a backgrounder is actually a profile in um, uh, in journalism and st our students have done plenty of profiles pro profile stories so does that make sense you just have to keep up and yeah um let me see but but for 498 uh, back to Cameron. I don't know if we're answering your question well at all, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, you don't want to take a you don't want to be a freelancer and get 498 credit. You've got to work for an organization. Uh, I think. Oh God. Hey. Um. Yeah. Um. Be, you know. I will talk about scamming. Thanks for that. There's some weird stuff out there. So make sure. Yeah. I understand. It's a music internship and you've kind of been scammed. So be careful, weird stuff like that. It does exist, sure. you know. All right, and uh, you know, this is another follow-up question. Um, uh, do you recommend students um, when they're looking for their internships, kind of cold call um, companies that don't have internships posted, um, even if it's a place that they really wanna work and then how do they approach that? Oh yeah, definitely. I would say absolutely call. Uh, get on uh, I, call and say, do you have any internships? If you can't find it anywhere, at, at call and don't be afraid to call. Oh my gosh, don't be afraid to be persistent. Persistence is valued in a job search. That's a good thing. That means you want it. You're you're on the ball and you're a go getter. They want that, so be persistent. I would call and I'd say, you know, are there any internships available? And the receptionist says, I I don't know or I don't think so. Then you ask, may I be? Um, would you mind transferring me to the public relations department or your communications department? Um, you know, be fairly assertive. There's nothing wrong with that. And also, you guys use us, your faculty members. Um, you might say, do you know, um, Professor Kingsley Wilson has so many contacts. So does um, uh, Professor Metzger. They've got tons of contacts. We've got Melissa Evans. Uh, we've just got a ton of our faculty are very, very connected. Same with the public relations faculty. They know a lot of people. They're really connected. You can ask them if they know of anyone. You can ask me as well. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Well, uh, I've been reviewing the uh, chat here, and I don't see any other questions. So, um, Emmy, if you'd like to wrap it up with some awesome okay. words of motivation, <laughs> let's do it. Oh my God, the pressure. <laughs> you guys, I'm, I'm so delighted that you're here today and you have all the skills. I want you to, to know that you've got 
a real distinct skill set that you got from your classes here. And you probably have even more than you realize if you've been active in clubs or activities on campus or off campus. There's the, the world is your oyster. I know it's a stupid thing to say, but it's true. You know, go for it. Try it enjoy it have fun don't be afraid of rejection we all get it it's normal it might not even have it, it ha most of the time it has nothing to do with you personally it means that they already have somebody's friend of the friend doing the internship but they have to advertise it it can same with a job you know it's the way it is it's the way life is you've got the skill set but one thing i do want you to do is start applying now get start thinking of where you want to go and applying now and getting it all lined up Okay, and and get 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 fit. by the time I see you at the beginning of the semester, I hope that you've applied to at least 50 sites, you know, don't come to me and say, Oh, I haven't, you know, applied yet. Oh, my God, I'm like, oh, well, you got to work super fast, or you got to drop the class, you know, so anyway. Okay, that's it.